Good morning. In this brief session, I am going to discuss with you relations of blood vessels of thyroid gland with special reference to non-recurrent laryngeal nerve. There are some MCQs at the end of the session for revision and assessment. Right and left recurrent laryngeal nerves are branches of vagus. Right recurrent laryngeal nerve hooks around the first part of subclavian artery and re-enters neck in the tracheoesophageal groove. On the other hand, left recurrent laryngeal nerve enters thoracic cavity. It hooks around ductus arteriosus to enter tracheoesophageal groove. Recurrent laryngeal nerve supplies all intrinsic muscles of larynx except cricothyroid which is innervated by external laryngeal branch of superior laryngeal nerve. Recurrent laryngeal nerve also gives inferior laryngeal nerve which supplies mucosa of the larynx below the vocal cords. Above the vocal cords, mucosa of the larynx is supplied by internal laryngeal nerve and there is an anastomosis between the branches of internal laryngeal and inferior laryngeal nerves called galenous anastomosis which supplies mucosa of larynx over the vocal cords. Non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is given by vagus in the neck. It is of three types. Type A, where non-recurrent laryngeal nerve accompanies superior thyroid vessels. Type 2A, non-recurrent laryngeal nerve accompanies inferior thyroid artery but nerve is superficial to the artery. In type B, the nerve is deep to the inferior thyroid artery. A right non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is associated with arterial soria and left non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is associated with dextrocardia and situs inversus. Now let us go to this diagram to explain the blood supply of thyroid gland. Thyroid gland is supplied by inferior thyroid artery which is a branch of thyrocervical trunk. It is the main blood supply to thyroid gland. Inferior thyroid artery is related to recurrent laryngeal nerve. Thyroid also receives this blood supply through superior thyroid artery. Superior thyroid artery is related to external laryngeal branch of superior laryngeal nerve. The third vessel which occasionally supplies the thyroid is called thyroid imma artery. Imma means unpaired. It arises from brachiocephalic trunk. It is commonly associated with Down syndrome and other chromosomal abrasions. Now let us go to the nerves related to thyroid vessels. Internal laryngeal nerve, which is a branch of the superior laryngeal nerve, is related to the superior laryngeal vessels. As already said, it supplies mucus of the larynx above the vocal cords. Superior thyroid artery is related to external laryngeal branch of superior laryngeal nerve. Now recurrent laryngeal nerve is related to the inferior thyroid artery. We should ligate both superior as well as the inferior thyroid arteries as close as possible to the gland. If we ligate inferior thyroid artery as away as possible from the gland, in order to prevent injury to the recurrent laryngeal nerve, which supplies all muscles of the larynx except cricothyroid, so that there is no hoarseness of voice and difficulty in breathing. Relations of inferior thyroid artery with recurrent laryngeal nerve. Recurrent laryngeal nerve usually passes posterior to the inferior thyroid artery or it passes anterior to the inferior thyroid artery or it passes between the branches of inferior thyroid artery. In 64% of the cases it passes posterior to the inferior thyroid artery and in 24% of the cases it passes anterior to the main trunk or branches of inferior thyroid artery. In 7.6% of the cases it passes between the terminal branches of inferior thyroid artery. So posterior being commonest presentation than the anterior. Now what is non-recurrent laryngeal nerve? Recurrent laryngeal nerve innervates all intrinsic muscles of the larynx except cricothyroid. The non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is a rare anatomical anomaly of recurrent laryngeal nerve with an incidence of 0.5 to 0.7% on right side 
and 0.004% on left side. It is difficult to identify this anomaly preoperatively unless an associated cardiovascular anomaly is documented preoperatively. So it confuses surgeons if they don't have preoperative diagnosis of these cardiovascular anomalies. Recurrent laryngeal nerve on the right side arises from vagus. It hooks around the first part of the subclavian artery, enters tracheoesophageal groove to supply intrinsic of muscles of larynx except cricothyroid. On the left side, it enters thoracic cavity at the level of ductus arteriosus. It hooks around the ductus arteriosus, enters tracheoesophageal groove and supplies muscles of larynx. Inferior thyroid artery is related to recurrent laryngeal nerve. All muscles of the larynx are supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve. It also gives inferior laryngeal nerve which supplies mucosa of the larynx below the vocal cords. External laryngeal branch of superior laryngeal nerve is related to superior thyroid artery. This vessel should also be ligated as close as possible to the upper pole of thyroid gland. Superior laryngeal nerve also gives internal laryngeal branch which is related to the superior laryngeal vessels. These vessels pierce the cricothyroid membrane to enter the laryngeal cavity. The non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is an embryological anomaly of recurrent laryngeal nerve because of its cervical origin. It runs a direct course from the vagus nerve to larynx without looping around first part of the subclavian artery on right side and ductus arteriosus on the left side. Three types of non-recurrent laryngeal nerves are reported in literature. Type 1. In this type, non-recurrent laryngeal nerve arises directly from vagus and travels with the superior thyroid vessels. In type 2a, the non-recurrent laryngeal nerve travels transversely parallel and superficial to the trunk of inferior thyroid artery. In type 2b, the nerve travels in a transverse path but deep to or between the branches of inferior thyroid artery. As shown in this diagram, on the right side recurrent laryngeal nerve hooks around the first part of the subclavian artery. In case of non-recurrent laryngeal nerve, brachiocephalic trunk on the right side is missing. The right subclavian artery arises from arch of aorta from the left side and passes posterior to the esophagus. In 5% of the cases, it leads to compression of esophagus and dysphagia. Here the non-recurrent laryngeal nerve originates in the neck. It can be sectioned during surgery because it is mistaken for inferior thyroid artery. The artery in this case arises from the arch of aorta and passes posterior to the esophagus. As shown in this animation, in case of type 1 non-recurrent laryngeal nerve, superior thyroid pedicle is accompanied by non-recurrent laryngeal nerve. In type 2a, non-recurrent laryngeal nerve passes transversely parallel to inferior thyroid artery but is superficial to it. And in type 2b, non-recurrent laryngeal nerve passes transversely below the inferior thyroid artery. B for below. So in case of type in case of type 1, non-recurrent laryngeal nerve passes with superior thyroid vessels. In case of type 2A, non-recurrent laryngeal nerve passes transversely and parallel to the trunk of inferior thyroid artery but lies above it. In case of type 2B, inferior thyroid artery passes below the non-recurrent laryngeal nerve. In this diagram, we can see the origin of superior thyroid artery and non-recurrent laryngeal nerve type 1 arising from the vagus and passing with the superior thyroid artery. If you go to the history of non-recurrent laryngeal nerve, this anomaly was first observed by Stedman in 1823 when he noticed it during cadaveric dissection along with anomalous origin and course of right subclavian artery. The 
non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is very rare. That's why it gives a challenge to a surgeon. It is prevalence has been reported as 0.3 to 1 person on the right side and 0.004 person on the left side. A right non recurrent laryngeal nerve is associated with arterial soria in which right subclavian artery originates from arch of aorta and passes posterior to the esophagus and causes dysphagia in 5% of the cases. Left non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is associated with dextrocardia and situs inversus. The embryological basis of non-recurrent laryngeal nerve. In the right sided non-recurrent laryngeal nerve appears to be associated to a vascular disorder called arterial soria in which fourth arch on the right side involates instead of persisting on the right as the subclavian artery. As a result of it, the right recurrent laryngeal nerve is not pulled inferiorly when the heart descends and the neck elongates during embryogenesis. The right recurrent laryngeal nerve arises higher in the neck instead of at the root and will then run a course directly to the larynx as the non-recurrent laryngeal nerve. The right subclavian artery then arises on the left side from the aortic arch and will take a course posterior to the esophagus. Only 5% of the patient with this vascular malformation present with dysphagia called dysphagia soria due to compression of esophagus by this retroesophageal artery. The non-recurrent laryngeal nerve on the left side is associated with situs inversus and dextrocardia where the aortic arch and ligamentum arteriosum are now on right side. As shown in this diagram, aberrant right subclavian artery originating from arch of aorta on the left side. So when there is absence of normal subclavian artery on the right side, there is no hooking of recurrent laryngeal nerve during descent of the heart leading to the cervical origin of recurrent laryngeal nerve and what we called as non-recurrent laryngeal nerve. Now the question is where to ligate thyroid artery during thyroid surgery. Both arteries should be ligated as close as possible to the thyroid gland. We ligate inferior thyroid artery as away as possible from the gland as it mentioned in some books to prevent the damage to the recurrent laryngeal nerve which supplies all muscles of the larynx except cricothyroid. There will be no hoarseness of voice and difficulty in breathing. But at the same time, it should be kept in mind that parathyroids receive their blood supply from terminal branches of inferior thyroid artery. If we ligate inferior thyroid artery as away as possible from the gland, parathyroids lose their blood supply leading to hypocalcemia. Now, if we ligate inferior thyroid artery as close as possible to the lower pole of the gland, blood supply to parathyroids remains intact. Thus, we prevent both recurrent laryngeal nerve as well as blood supply of parathyroid glands. Superior thyroid artery should also be ligated as close as possible to the gland. Superior thyroid artery is related to the superior laryngeal nerve. Superior laryngeal nerve gives two branches. One enters inside larynx through thyroid membrane and it is called internal laryngeal nerve. This nerve supplies mucus of the larynx above the vocal cords. External laryngeal branch of superior laryngeal nerve supplies cricothyroid. It accompanies superior thyroid artery. This vessel should also be ligated as close as possible to the gland in order to prevent injury to external laryngeal branch of superior laryngeal nerve. This is because of the fact that superior thyroid artery acts as a guide superior laryngeal branch of external laryngeal nerve. So should be ligated as close as possible to gland to preserve innervation of cricothyroid which is denser of vocal folds. As shown in this diagram, superior laryngeal nerve gives internal laryngeal nerve and also external laryngeal branch of superior laryngeal nerve which supplies cricothyroid. So superior thyroid artery should also be ligated as close as possible to upper pole of the thyroid gland. I want to summarize my lecture as superior thyroid artery is intimately related to external laryngeal branch of superior laryngeal nerve and inferior thyroid is closely related to recurrent laryngeal nerve. Non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is a rare anomaly 
where a direct cervical branch of vagus nerve replaces recurrent laryngeal nerve. There are three types, type 1, type 2a and type 2b. Right non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is common than the left recurrent laryngeal nerve whose prevalence is 0, 0.00 right sided non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is associated with arterial dysoria and left sided non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is associated with dextrocardia and situs inversus. Origin of both can be explained on embryological basis. Knowledge of this aberrant nerve is a must for surgeons. Otherwise, they may injure recurrent laryngeal nerve by taking it for inferior thyroid artery resulting in hoarseness of voice and strider. Now let us go for a quiz based on this lecture. In order to preserve artery supply of parathyroid glands, at what side should inferior thyroid artery be ligated? A as close as possible to the thyroid gland, B as away as possible from the thyroid gland, C near the lower pole of thyroid gland, D near the upper pole of thyroid gland. A is the correct option because when we ligate inferior thyroid artery as close as possible to the thyroid gland, we preserve both recurrent laryngeal nerve as well as blood supply to parathyroid glands. Which of the following is most important function of the larynx? Phonation, swallowing, passage of air, passage of food. Though larynx is called voice box, but its main function is passage of air. We can live without voice, but we cannot survive without air. Which of the following arteries mainly supplies blood to the thyroid gland? Superior, inferior, accessory, thyroidema. Inferior thyroid is the main blood supply of thyroid gland. Left non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is associated with dextrocardia, cardiomegaly, dysphagia lasoria, arteria lasoria. Left recurrent laryngeal nerve is associated with dextrocardia. Which of the following is not a type of right non-recurrent laryngeal nerve? Type A, type 2B, type 2A, type 3A. 3A is not described in literature. Which of the following types of right non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is related to superior thyroid artery? Type 1, type 2B, type 2A, type 3A. It is type 1. Where right non-recurrent laryngeal nerve arises from vagus and accompanies superior thyroid vessels. Which of the following types of Non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is related to inferior thyroid artery. Type 1, type 2A, type 2C, type 2B. Type 2A is the correct option. We don't have any type 2C non-recurrent laryngeal nerve. Right non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is associated with dextrocardia, cardiomegaly, situs inversus, arteria lasoria. D is the correct option. In how many percent of the cases arteria lasoria presents with dysphagia? 1%, 5%, 10%, 15%. 5% is the correct option. Which of the following is ligated as close as possible to thyroid gland during thyroidectomy? Superior thyroid artery, inferior thyroid artery, both, none. Both is the correct option. True about prevalence of non-recurrent laryngeal nerve is more on right side, same on both sides of neck. Prevalence is more on right side of the neck. True statement about gallinus anastomosis is, it is an arterial anastomosis. It is an anastomosis between terminal branches of internal laryngeal and, and recurrent laryngeal nerve. C. It is an end-to-end -end anastomosis. B is the correct option. Basically, mucosa of the larynx above the Vocal cord is supplied by internal laryngeal nerve called laryngeal nerve. Mucosa of the larynx below the vocal cord is supplied by inferior laryngeal nerve which is a branch of recurrent laryngeal nerve. So mucosa over the vocal cord is supplied by anastomosis between the terminal branches of inferior and internal laryngeal nerve and this anastomosis between the branches of inferior laryngeal nerve and internal laryngeal nerve is called gallinus anastomosis. Thank you for watching this video. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share this channel. Press on the bell icon to remain updated. Thank you.